and then the fourth one, and the foundation for the other three, the fourth one is equanimity, is a balanced state of mind, and the particular uh, quality that this creates at home or in the workplace is harmony, harmonia. So if the situation is not balanced, if it's not, if it's not harmonious, people are not getting on well together, the cause is a lack of equanimity. And equanimity means this um, sense of not discriminating against others. Not thinking, this person's good, this person's bad, um, because this person's hair is red, I like them, and this one's blonde, I don't like them, etc. This sense of shape and color, and then not placing a discriminating label on the shape and the color. Just shape and color. Look at the skills and the qualities, but don't discriminate based on the shape and the color. So with harmony, with equanimity, we accept good and bad happening in different situations. And when it's good, we accept the good, but we also know it can change to negative, it can change to bad. When you have discrimination, then you think, oh, this is a good situation, and you attach to it. And when it's a negative situation, you want to get rid of the, the situation, the people creating the situation. So harmony is staying with the situation no matter whether it's good or bad, and then working with it in order to improve it. So everything is workable. With equanimity, you can work with anything. You're not rejecting it. You're not bringing prejudice to the situation, and you're not using aggression against the situation, because you're trying to create balance. Whereas, if you're not trying to create balance, you're trying to create imbalance. So, this mind free of prejudice is very important. Like I said, shape and color, but then not having the first labeling thought, I don't like. From this, it expands the possibilities of new talent, new people coming into the situation, and then of also of maintaining the old people, the older people who have been in the situation, maintaining them. Because there's this sense now of um, maybe changing staff too quickly. If that happens, if staff are changing too quickly, then you don't have the DNA of the company. So in order to keep the knowledge of the company, then you need to keep the individuals. In order to keep them, you need to have equanimity. Harmony. Then the way to change your view of others is to start thinking the first labeling thought. So this is when it's going to get a bit difficult. The first labeling thought is when you look at shape and color. Okay, you know shape and color, right? So you look at shape and color, which happens to be a human being, and from your mind, there's a projection onto the shape and the color, I don't like. Right? It's just shape and color, but you've decided, I don't like. Maybe based on history, or based on something you don't even understand. So, we have shape and color, and based on previous experience, we then project on that, onto that shape and color, I like, or I potentially like, I don't like, or I potentially don't like, and then the third one is, I don't care. So we have three major feelings, three also major discriminations. Like, and, or potentially like, don't like, potentially I don't like, and the third one, the major one, the biggest one, I don't care. And I don't care is, so what have you got to do with me? Do we have anything to do with each other? No. 
then I don't care. No connection. So that one is the biggest number of living beings. I don't care. And we can counteract that also. But let's stick to I don't like and I like. So based on something from my mind, I'm projecting onto the shape and the color, I like it. And then in accordance with that first labeling thought. So I better write it down. So do you understand this? First labeling thought? It means the moment you have a perception of that external object, then the first labeling thought goes out from your mind, projects onto the object, and then in accordance with that first labeling thought, like, don't like, don't care, other thoughts follow. In accordance with that first thought. So now it's virtually that you're trapped into thinking in a certain way. So if I meet him, you know, we meet in a bar, He's drinking beer. Thank you. He's drinking beer. I'm drinking tonic water. <laughs> and we're getting drunk together, right? <laughs> Me, it's not so real, but yours could be more real. Um, but I've just met him, and my mind is saying, something wrong with this guy, something wrong with this guy. You know, because it was based on that first labeling thought, which is based on this past program. Now, if I get to know him, I've got to change from that first labeling thought. Because that first labeling thought was negative. I don't like, because of the, the color, right? So I don't like. But what, as I'm getting to know him, I'm thinking, but he's a really nice guy, I really like him. There's no problem with him. But in the back of my mind, it's saying, danger, danger. So one part of my mind is saying, he's okay. And the other part is saying, he's not okay. And we wouldn't know this was going on. This sort of conflict in the mind. We wouldn't know it was happening because we wouldn't usually be aware of this conflict. So what we can try to become aware of is the first labeling thought. The first label that we put onto the situation. And when we say like, we superglue. You know, we write and we superglue like. And we stick it onto the object. The problem is, it's like a superglue that we're using. And so if we want to change the label, we have to scrape the label off and we have to start over. Like is not such a problem. But don't like is a bigger problem because in business you often don't work with the people that you want to work with or you don't have customers that you want to have. You have the difficult customers, the people that you don't know how to communicate with or difficult to communicate with. So if the first labeling thought is, I don't like you, then the difficulty gets worse and worse and worse because of this first labeling thought. So how to counteract that first labeling thought. If you find you have a judgmental mind or a critical mind, then this type of mind needs, may you be happy. Instead of the first labeling thought, I don't like you. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to negotiate with you. I don't want to work for you. You know, that first labeling thought, whenever you see that person, instead of that, use the first labeling thought, may you be happy sort of cut in before the mind cuts in. You know, get in there first and say, may you be happy. So what I do is I often ask people, do this for the whole day. Whenever you see somebody, the first thought, may you be happy, may you be happy, may you be happy. And they, oh, should be quite easy. And so they start doing it, you know, may you be happy, may you be happy. And they're just doing it in their own mind. But then what they find is the opposite starts to come up. But why? Why should you be happy? You know? Why should I wish you happiness? I don't know if I do wish you happiness. So this is interesting because this positive thought then brings up the negative thoughts. Maybe the thoughts 
you would not have been aware of, but it brings them more to the surface. And then we have to work with these negative thoughts that would normally be controlling us, our behavior and our attitudes in the situation. So the purpose is, one, to become used to working with, may you be happy. The other is to become aware of the negative thoughts in relation to, may you be happy. So often, like I said, the discrimination is under the surface. If it's the blue-green discrimination, I'm thinking, may you be happy, but my discrimination is saying, no. And then I think, but why not? Because he's wearing blue and green. It's a sin, you know? So in my mind, this is something completely wrong. And if I ask, but why is it completely wrong? I'm, I don't know, really. I mean, I was sitting in, in retreat, in meditation one day, and it suddenly came to my mind about this blue and green. And then I talked about it in a, in a big conference, a talk, and one lady said to me, oh, I grew up with another saying. I think it was orange and yellow. Orange and yellow should never be put together. I said, well, you must have a problem, you know? So, the interesting thing is that as we're growing up, we're sometimes given um, tools that benefit us, and sometimes we're given tools that don't work for us. And through mindfulness, you have the choice between using or not using, discarding, when I talk about the rubbish, you know, the garbage in the room, discarding, letting it go, or working with it.